we started out working on a hatchet tonight. This is sold. I got to get a handle on it now. So I'll give you a little close up of what we have going on. Focus. There you go. So she's sharpened, shaving sharp actually. Ready to go. Ready for the handle. Now I got to work on my drifting, get that a little better. But it's not horrible. It's going to take a handle just fine. So you notice this is kind of a big pretty big eye on this little hatchet head and the reason I do that is for one customer wants the walnut handle on it which walnut handle isn't the greatest in the world for chopping but if it's short enough you make it beefy enough it'll do all right but uh, it looks really good and it actually really sweet on a little carbon hatchet like this so that's what we're working on so we have a piece of walnut here now it's important when you're making tool handles like this, I want the grains running this way. Because that way when they go into the eye of the tool, I'm going to have the strongest possible tool. If I have the grains oriented the short way, it's just going to snap off in my hand. And like I said, I make a little bit of a wider, a wider eye than what I need for this, these little hatchets, but that's simply because of the material I'm making. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a piece that I can't really use for much else just because of the way the grain structure is, the way it's split off, and I like to use things like this. I like the grain to grain uh, to split as naturally as I can. So this is from some really a really gnarly log. But uh, anyway, I've got my mark down here. We're going to get it kind of the same all the way up through. Now I'm using a little carving axe I made a while ago. I just got a handle on it. We're going to see. This will be its first test run. We'll see how well it works. I like with a carving axe because there's a lot of control with it and if you have it sharp enough you can you know you could do a lot with it but we have a line on this side we have a line on that side and all we're going to do is we're just going to work this stock down now these carving hatchets I make or carving axes whatever you want to call them I put a pretty narrow bevel on them because I'm not looking to split. If I put too, too beefy of a bevel on this thing, we're going to end up digging way into this. So I keep it kind of a shallow bevel. And if you do the geometry on these right, they're actually really easy to use. So I'm not trying to go the full width of this right now. I'm going to try to angle it up to my line right here, do the same on this side, and then I'll have kind of a high spot in the middle to work down. You'll see, you'll see you can actually get really close to a line if you take your time. That's why you see me choking up on the handle and kind of back, you know, up here with it. It gives me a lot of control. Now, I do that if I'm working close to a line, but obviously if I'm trying to take a lot of material off, I'll go back and kind of swing for the fences. I like using fairly clear wood when I'm making handles. I mean, for obvious reasons, you don't want a bunch of knots in the way. So we've got kind of a pin knot right there. And we have another one right there. And that looks like the only two in the whole thing. So what I want to do, I have a natural curve to this piece. It's kind of going this way. I want to follow that natural curve, but I want to kind of cut these little knots out of here. Now, you see a lot of crazy curves and axe and hatchet handles these days 
where guys are making them and they're doing all this goofy stuff. And that that's fine for what they're doing. I, I'm trying to make highly usable tools, and I know that probably sounds probably sounds bad to say it like that, but the grain structure on wood is really important when you're using stuff that's going to be striking things. So I I could curb this a little bit, and I will a little bit, but I don't want a bunch of grain run out on the handle, because otherwise it's going to give me a weak spot, so as it strikes something, it might split right there, and we really don't want that. Now this handle is plenty long enough, so I'm just going to kind of eyeball here. I want to kind of avoid that knot there. And we have this knot right here. We want to avoid this. And I'm going to slightly curve this handle. Now this is all rough, you know what I mean? It's not nothing set in stone here. So I'm going to try to do the same thing here. We'll just we're just going to follow this line. Now you see I'm making it much larger than it needs to be. But once we get this kind of roughed in, once we get this roughed in, we will uh, we'll do the rest with a draw knife. But I'm going to leave up here, I'm going to leave this alone for the most part for now. That will change. Actually, I can get it a little bit. I guess we can trim that off a little bit. So this is where the head will end up going. Obviously this is the bottom of the handle. So if I get this kind of shaped out with the hatchet, and then we can start shaping this, we're going to be in good shape. Well, something you want to be careful with with a straight grain wood, I'm diving into the grain here. If I try to go too far, I'll end up splitting this right off. So what I want to do it in a little ways and then flip it over and kind of follow that back in. And that way I have a lot more control over what I'm doing. Now I could do this a lot faster on a bandsaw. I could take this up to the wood shop upstairs. We could rip this out in about five minutes, but it just is not the same. It doesn't have the same feel. And I like that when I'm making handles, when I do it like this, I'm following the grains a little bit better, and I feel you get a stronger handle. Now granted, if you're doing a bunch of production work, obviously this is probably not the best way to go about it because you're not going to make much money. I mean, this is just a side thing for me. If I was doing it for a living, I would most likely just put it on my bandsaw. Now, walnuts are really nice wood to work with for carving. But this stuff is really dry, so it tends to split away easily when I'm doing this. But, if you take your time and control it a little bit, you get really good results out of it. Again, you can see where it starts to split right there. I've got to hit it from the other direction.
Oops. Well, it's sharp. You know I've done enough of this now, you'd think I'd be smart enough to cover these tut edges when I'm doing this. I mean, you would just think. But, what is a project without a wound? Just call it character stains on the handle. part of the whole deal. Now when I do this, I'm going to put a coat on, then I'm going to take the heat gun to it. It speeds up the process of drying it out. And lets this linseed oil soak down into the grains really well. And then after this dries for a while, I'll put a couple coats of true oil on it and then just let it set overnight so it'll give the handle, it seals it up really well. It'll give the handle a uh, little bit more water protection in case you're out hiking with this thing or something like that. Well, I almost hate to get this dirty. to see how it works for its function and this is mostly what I do with these for me it's uh, bow making I don't think that's too bad at all hmm, that'll work I like to see how much control I could get over it Not bad. Well, there she is, all ready to go to its new home tomorrow. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video tonight. These are a lot of fun to make. It's uh, The handles are labor intensive. Eventually, I'd like to make a handle making machine, but that's going to be a little bit down the road. I'm starting to scrounge parts for it already. No promises on when. It might be one of those projects in 10 years we finally get to, but uh, yeah, we're getting better at it all the time. I know the first one of these I made, it was, oh, it was awful. Couldn't even, uh, <laughs> didn't cut right. Looked like garbage, but I thought it was great. You know, you're going to find that if you're getting into this. So, anyways, this is another one of those things. If you guys are interested in these, let me know in the comments. If any of you are looking for draw knives, let me know in the comments. I will get your email addresses. We can set it up. I'm kind of starting to get into production mode. I'm finally getting to working on the website. Again, I can't promise when it's going to be ready. I'm trying to figure out the technology end of it. So right now I'm just doing everything through PayPal invoices, things like that. So if you're interested, if you want what we're making, just let me know. Like I said, this one has a home. I have another one. This was the other one you saw in the video. I think this handle can almost be a little bit bigger, to be honest with you. But So we're, we're kind of experimenting with different styles for the carving axes, things of that nature. I hardly ever use a hatchet for splitting, splitting wood, chopping wood. I usually use these mostly for carving. 
So anything carving that's going to be a little bit different edge geometry, things like that, but uh, they're a lot of fun to make. Labor intensive, but it gets easier with everyone. So anyway, I hope everybody enjoyed it, and I will catch you on the next one.